Hey guys, Luke Scurvy here. This is part 3 of my Dissecting Visual Aesthetic series. I would highly recommend watching part 1 before watching this one. I set up a lot of the basics of the discussion in that video. This week, I'm going to be going over tone and color. Let's begin with tone. This is all about the grayscale, the exposure and contrast or affinity of the image. Tone is really interesting because it's the highest resolution part of human eyesight. Plenty of animals beat us when it comes to perceiving colors, but hardly any animals, if any, have a higher dynamic range than we do. We're able to discern several layers of tonality in a single instance. Tone is most obvious in black and white films, but it's still a major part of the colored image. There are two ways the artist can control the tone of the picture, through art direction and lighting. With art direction, they can paint the walls a darker color and give the actor a white t-shirt. With lighting, they remove any lighting falling on a white wall to make it appear far darker. And really brighten up the subject with the light to make it pop. The cinematographer and director can also use exposure to affect tone. They can shoot with normal exposure, or they can shoot at two stops darker or two stops lighter. Each makes a huge impact on the image. So what does tone accomplish? How can the artist use it to create a compelling narrative? You can see the extremes of tonal stylings in film noir, where the technique is hyperbolized to the max. Does the subject stand out brightly from the background? Or are they hidden in a shadow amongst bright walls? Or maybe they blend in seamlessly with the tone of the background, whether it's bright or dark. These all have extremely different emotions tied to them. How are some characters lit compared to others? Are they lit with hard lighting with sharp shadows? Or is it a soft, cosmetic looking image? Tone adds a lot to the character of the image and is perhaps the aspect of the visuals most associated with the cinematic image. Don't mix tone up with color. They are often mixed with one another, but are quite different. When thinking about tone, just imagine the image being in black and white. Color is certainly the most misunderstood aspect of the visuals. Many people are uninformed and taught incorrectly about color. Most people will say the primary colors are red, blue, and yellow, which is incorrect. The truth is that there are two sets of primary colors, the primary additive colors and the primary subtractive colors. The primary additive colors are red, green, and blue, whereas the primary subtractive colors are magenta, yellow, and cyan. What's the difference? Well, the primary additive colors are based on mixing colors that emit light, such as the sun, fire, film, film lights, TVs, and projectors. The primary subtractive colors are based on mixing colors that reflect light, such as paint. Yellow paint doesn't emit the color yellow. It takes the white light that falls onto it and subtracts everything out of it that's not yellow. That's why if you mix magenta, cyan, and yellow paint together, you get black paint. It subtracts all the color, leading it to reflect a very limited amount of color. The same thing is seen with primary color. If you add red, green, and blue lights, commonly seen in TVs with red, green, and blue subpixels, you get a white light. You've added all the colors together. This is actually one of the biggest differences between shooting on digital versus film. Digital uses the additive system, while film uses the subtractive system. One of the side effects of this is that on film, when a color becomes more saturated, they'll actually get darker. Whereas on a digital sensor, it will perceive a more saturated color as being brighter. This lends to film's dynamic range, because it'll take something that's super saturated and bright, like the blue sky or green foliage, and darken it extremely. Color can be broken down into three parts. Hue which is the color of the color, brightness, and saturation. Not all colors are created equal, however. If you look at a color wheel, which shows each color at its maximum saturation, and make it black and white, you can see there is a wide variety in brightness, yellow being the brightest, and blue being the darkest. If you try to raise the brightness of the blue to match the yellow, it'll lose all of its saturation, because when you increase the brightness of a color, you're just adding in white, so you're washing out the intensity of the saturation. It is impossible to have a color wheel with all the hues having matching brightness and saturation. You can only have one or the other. Which is important to note because a saturated yellow will attract the audience's eye before anything else. Because it's not only saturated, 
but also extremely bright. The human eye is drawn to brightness before saturation. So that's classifying color on its own. But what happens when you start putting them next to each other? Your brain doesn't interpret what you see in a linear fashion. It's always applying certain algorithms to make it easier for you to interpret and grasp what is in front of you and allow you to quickly focus on the things you should be focusing on. Color is heavily affected by this. An example of this is placing a color on a black background, then placing the exact same color on a white background. The color will appear brighter on the black background. You can see a similar effect with complementary colors, which are any two colors that are opposite of one another on the color wheel. If you place them by one another, it will make them appear more saturated. With all the technical aspects discussed, what can the artist really use this all for? Well, the visuals and the literal narrative of the film should rhyme with one another. So when there is an intense moment in the story, the film, more often than not, should have some form of intense contrast in the image. And during more relaxed scenes, the visuals should mirror that. You could graph out the visual intensity of certain films, and they would match exactly with the rising tension of the story. The use of color is the aspect that seems to vary the most across the film. It'll start out with one color scheme, and totally shift to another one halfway through. Or maybe even associate certain colors of saturations with certain characters. Maybe even give something like a flashback, a different color scheme from the rest of the film. Color is also very useful in short, immediate bursts of intense passion. For example, let's say someone got shot and there was blood on the ground and you want to make it as impactful as possible. Perhaps it's one of the main characters. If you place the person who was shot in a CN room, the red of the blood would appear to be super saturated. The opposite is also true. Maybe you have someone get shot but you want to make it seem as mundane as possible. Perhaps the person who shot him is a serial killer and is very used to the thought of killing people and has become very accustomed to it. You can make the background red and maybe even give the character a red shirt to make the blood seem far less significant in respect to the rest of the frame. I can go on for hours talking about different examples, but I think you get the point. Color is one of the most versatile and ranged aspects of the visuals. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like. Next week, I'll be discussing movement. So if that sounds interesting to you, click subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.